So, you know, I was born in Singapore on 24th October 1948. So I guess I've lived in Singapore almost 70 years now. When I grew up, uh, Singapore was still a poor developing country. Our per capita income when we became independent was $500, the same as Ghana and Africa. Either you can say the misfortune or the good fortune of being born in a very poor family in a poor Singapore. So when I was six years old, uh, when I went to school for the first day, uh, we were weighed at school, they wanted to see how heavy we were. And I was declared undernourished. <laughs> so I was put in a special feeding program. Uh, when I went to school and the principal had a big pail of milk, and all the children who were underweight were asked to take one scoop of milk from the pail of milk. And uh, our house in Singapore had no flush toilet. There was crime and riots, gangster fights in my neighborhood. So in a sense, I grew up in what you call a typical third world environment. And it's quite remarkable that in my lifetime, Singapore has gone from being a third world country to a first world country and I have lived through this remarkable transformation. I was Dean of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy for uh, 13 years, from 2004 to 2017. And uh, I would give every student who came to the Lee Kuan Yew School the same lecture. I said, I'm going to share with you the secret of Singapore's success free of charge. And I to tell the students that if you implement this secret formula, your country will succeed. And I capture the secret formula with the acronym in English, uh, MPH. The M stands for meritocracy. Uh, meritocracy means that you select the best people to run the country. And what brings many countries down, uh, especially in the third world, is that when it comes to selecting the finance minister or the economics minister, they will give their jobs to their brothers, their cousins, their uncles, their relatives, and not to the best people. And Singapore did the exact opposite. Uh, in Singapore, their jobs were given to the best people. And in the case of uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, uh, Mr. Lee Hsien Loong, when he went to study in Cambridge University, he was a top student. Uh, in the class, if not in the university. In fact, his professors were so impressed, they said you should become a mathematician because you've become a world-class mathematician. Then he went to study at another great university, the uh, Harvard Kennedy School. And in that university, he's one of the few students to get an article published uh, in a tier one economics journal. Very few students. <laughs> get articles published in a tier one economics journal. So he's incredibly brilliant. And so if, if the best man of the job is Mr. Lee Kuan Yew's son, then he should be selected. Not on the basis of the fact that he's a relative, but on the basis that he's the best person for the job. So meritocracy is the first pillar of Singapore's secret formula. Uh, the second pillar is uh, P, and P stands for pragmatism. Pragmatism is an English word and it's an English concept. But the best definition of pragmatism was given by China's leader, Mr. Deng Xiaoping, when he said it doesn't matter whether a cat is black or a cat is white. Uh, if the cat catches mice, it is a good cat. So in the same way, it doesn't matter what your ideology is. If it works, you use it. So Singapore was uh, very pragmatic, so it would take some policies that are capitalist and some policies that are socialist, and it would mix them up. <laughs> and that's what pragmatism is about. You're not bound by any uh, ideology. But the third pillar, the H is of course the hardest to achieve, eh? because H stands for honesty. And indeed, what has brought most third world countries down and what has led to their failures in development has been corruption. And so Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, after he became Prime Minister, made it a point to punish not the junior people, but the very senior people. 
So when a deputy minister went on holiday with his friend, the businessman, when he came back, he was arrested. And so he said, why am I being arrested? He says, you went on a holiday with the businessman, he paid all your expenses, that's corruption. You go to jail. So when a deputy minister is sent to jail, then everybody says, oops, I've got to be careful, I can also go to jail. So that honesty factor is one critical reason why Singapore has been exceptionally successful. So it's a combination of meritocracy, pragmatism and honesty, uh, then that's the formula for Singapore's success.